Hi everyone, welcome back this week. Now this week we are having a more academic-like discussion on two journal articles showing how the Omicron variant resists our innate immune response and also damping hybrid immunity based on infection history and the implications on future treatment and booster design. So let's get started. Before we dive into the two academic articles, let's have a quick overview of some specific terms related to the innate immune system so that we are all on the same page. Innate immunity is our first line of defense against all infectious agents entering our bodies. More specifically, type 1 and 3 interferons, or IFNs, are potent cytokines produced by various subtypes that fight viral infections. Interferon responses are very rapid within a few minutes after encountering the virus. Interferons are classified into three groups, type 1, 2, and 3. Type 1 interferons consist of multiple subunits of interferon alphas and a single type of interferon beta. Type 2 interferon group has only one member, interferon gamma, which is secreted by natural killer and T cells, but not directly by virus infected cells. Type 3 interferon consists of multiple subtypes of interferon lambdas. Interferon betas and lambdas can be secreted by any cell type when they are infected by viruses. In contrast, interferon alphas are generally produced by immune cells, particularly monocytes and dendritic cells. Interferons do not directly kill the virus when virally infected cells. Instead, they bind to specific cell receptors and turn on genes that can repress viral replication, viral protein translation, and increase the breakdown of viral genetic materials. Interferons can also activate other immune cells such as natural killer cells and macrophages. Studies published in September 2020 have shown that SARS-CoV-2 infected individuals with either genetic defects in interferon signaling or interferon reactive autoantibodies had an increased risk of developing severe COVID-19. So the theory is that since interferon are very important in controlling early virus infection level, and if the virus variants gain more resistance to interferon, then it may produce high viral loads and exacerbate transmission and disease severity. And now let's look at the new study. A recent study by a group of scientists at the University of Colorado looked at how different SARS-CoV-2 variants resist interferon actions. They compared 17 different human interferons against the original string, the G614 string or lineage B, and the five major variants of concerns which are the alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and omicron with in vitro cell-based experiments. The alpha, beta, and gamma variants circulated simultaneously in different parts of the world and they were more interferon-resistant than the ancestral strain. Delta, on the other hand, was more sensitive or similar interferon sensitivity compared to the alpha in cell experiments. So other than interferon sensitivity, deltas increased the transmissibility and resistance to neutralizing antibodies may have contributed to the shift from alpha to delta. And Omicron is the problem child. It had the highest resistance to interferon beta, which was one of the strongest interferon tested in this study. Mainstream discussions often focus on spike protein mutations and antibody escapes, but in addition to the spike protein, new variants also have mutations in nucleocapsid, membranes, and non-structural proteins. Now, many of these viral proteins play a significant role in inhibiting interferon responses, and multiple mutations observed in the Omicron variants may contribute together to the increased resistance against interferon actions. And now let's look at the implications for treatment strategy or design. Now, interferon beta, one of the strongest interferon, was 
actually tested in clinical trials for treating COVID during the early phase of the pandemic and showed some promising results in phase 2 trials. Even though interferons are molecules that target the host cells, this study suggested that emergent variants not only evolve to escape antibody responses but can also significantly increase resistance to interferons' antiviral effects. This could be the reason behind the unsuccessful results from more recent clinical trials conducted by the NIH and the industry. So studying how new variants may evade innate immunity is also important in designing future treatments. So we've just looked at the study on how Omicron weakens the interferon response from our innate immunity. And next we are going to look at a study that shows Omicron weakens hybrid immunity based on infection history. So this Omicron weakens hybrid immunity phenomenon were called damping hybrid immunity. A recent study published in Science looked at how vaccinations and history of infections created different immune imprinting patterns in UK healthcare workers. Let's have a little quick recap on immune imprinting. In brief, our first encounter with the spike protein or other viral antigens, either through infection or vaccination, shapes our immunity pattern. Now, this effect has been observed for many years in flu and dengue viruses. Studies are now also showing immune imprinting applies to the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus. Now, this study looked at the cross-protective immunity against Omicron in triple vaccinated healthcare workers with different COVID infection history to determine the effect of immune imprinting. Now, in fact, this study is quite long, and I'm going to summarize some of the major findings and implications together, and let's take a quick look. Now, the first major finding is that regardless of previous infection history, the level of neutralizing antibodies eventually plateau in healthcare workers after receiving three doses of COVID-19 vaccines. Now, this raises questions about the immunological effect of future booster doses. The second finding is that Healthcare workers infected with the original string showed significantly reduced anti-receptor binding domain antibody titers against the beta, gamma, and omicron compared to those who were never infected. Now, this shows immune imprinting from the original string infection. And third, infection with either the original alpha or the delta strain with triple vaccination did not show improved antibody cross-reaction against Omicron. Again, this shows immune imprinting from earlier infections regardless of infection histories. And in terms of T-cell responses, the researchers observed that regardless of previous SARS-CoV-2 infection histories, T-cell responses were reduced against the Omicron variant. And number five, for those who had a previous infection and three doses of the mRNA vaccine and still got the Omicron breakthrough infection, T-cells could not recognize the Omicron S1 protein. Now, even though Omicron breakthrough infections help increase cross-reactive immunity against other variants of concerns, it did not boost the immunity response against Omicron itself. This observation may explain why people got Omicron reinfection in a relatively short time. But the more profound implication is that mRNA vaccine using the Omicron spike protein may not offer any protective advantage. 
Overall, this paper showed that immune imprinting from prior infections prevents immune boosting by Omicron infection. Now, with other Omicron subvariants like the BA.4.5 surge that we are having, the picture is likely even more complicated than this paper suggested. But I believe it is safe to say that. This paper resonates with my last video, saying that Omicron-specific booster may be a wild card in the booster equation. The bottom line is that the immune system is complex, and it doesn't look like it is getting easier to study the complex interaction between the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus, the vaccine, and our immune system. My opinion is that we should not be too excited. By seeing only a boost in antibody levels, because not only the virus is mutating, our immune system is also morphing with each additional virus encounter and additional booster dose. And I believe policymakers should be looking at the whole picture before making premature blanket assumptions and assuming everybody is going to benefit equally. With a given intervention, that is all for this week. Thank you very much for watching. And I know this video is a little bit more boring with many immunology terms. So for those of you who would like to have a quick brush up on basic immunology, you may want to check out my immunology short and brief series. And I hope to see you again in my next video. Meanwhile, please stay safe, stay healthy, and take care. Bye.